Today, I'm going to answer your questions about the multi-tool and why this is a must-have to keep in your back pocket when you're painting. These multi-tools, also known as hook scrapers, are a painter's best friend. There are so many useful features on these tools. Scraping back flaking paint chips, opening and closing paint cans, Some multi-tools even come with a pull-out screwdriver. Seriously, if you're a painter by trade, or you're someone who is painting and renovating your home, you're going to need one of these tools. That's why the multi-tool is number one on my top three must-haves that all painters need to have on them when painting. Seriously, if you're a painter by trade, here you go mate, catch or you're a renovator and you're painting at home, here you go, then you're gonna want one of these tools. I'm telling you, after watching my video, you're gonna wanna go out and buy one of these yourself. You're crazy not to. As you can see, all these multi-tools do look alike. At the top of the tool, they all have the hammer head scraper. On one side is a hook shaped cutout, but each one is slightly different. From the basic wooden handled 3-in-1 multi-tool to the mid-range 7-in-1 multi-tool and then the 10-in-1 folding multi-tool right up to the 17-in-1 multi-tool with all the bells and whistles. <laughs> I know, it sounds a bit overwhelming on deciding which one to choose. I recommend you stick with the simple 7-in-1 multi-tool. This is the tool I personally like to use. It's a strong, sturdy tool with a soft rubber grip handle with all the necessary attachments you'll need for painting. Here, I'll run through all the uses with you, just as advertised on the label. Tool 1, the scraper. First of all, you will notice the top of the tool. Its main function is to scrape, obviously. If you have some flaking paint that needs to be scraped off, this will definitely help with the prep work. Tool 2, the gouger. The corners of this tool are great for scraping out crumbling edges, like cracking corners and woodwork. Tool 3, the spreader. If you're missing your filling blades and there's no other option, a quick fix to the problem is to use the top of the tool and scoop out a bit of filler. Then you can use the tool to flush fill that hole in the wall. Tool 4, the nail setter. You can use the end of the multi tool like a hammer to tap in nails into the wall. Tool 5, the nail puller. The hole in the middle is not too bad for lifting out smaller nails used for hanging pictures. Tool 6, the putty remover. Brittle putty, old bulging gap filler and silicon can be cut away or dug out with no problem. Tool 7, the roller cleaner. The hook part of this tool is designed to scrape out your paint rollers before washing. But honestly, these seven uses only just scratch the surface of what this tool is actually capable of. So now I'm going to share with you all these other uses I use this tool for. Tool 8, the box opener. The corner blade is great for cutting open boxes. Now this is the tool I use the most when painting. Tool 9, the paint can opener. These edges are perfect for opening paint can lids, big and small. Using a twist and lift motion, work your way around the paint can until the lid pops off. Brilliant! Tool 10, the make do screwdriver. If a screwdriver is out of reach and you don't have a built-in option on your multi-tool, these corners can also be used to screw out and screw in screws. Tool 11, the PowerPoint cover remover. It's handy to flick off PowerPoint and light switch covers that have been sealed with old paint which is too difficult to remove by hand. Tool 12, the paint cleaner. 
Another neat trick is to use this tool with a rag wrapped around the blade to clean any paint that may have found its way onto the floor when painting your skirtings. Tool 13, the paint lid tightener. With the end of the tool, you can use this part to bash down your lid of your paint can. Even if the seal is bent, rusted, and somewhat paint clogged, this will get your lid back on, nice and tight. Tool 14, the sticky remover. When removing sticky stuff like glue, sticky tape, blue tack, and the annoying sticky stuff that gets left behind when removable hooks break on you, it's not a problem. Tool 15, the tube opener. If your blade is sharp enough, you can slice off the tube ends used for gaps and silicon. Also, you can slice and shape the tube nozzles as well. Tool 16, the screw stud basher. You can also hit in old screw studs hanging out of walls to then later patch over them with filler. Tool 17, the heat gun scraper. When the tool is used with a heat gun, it works well to remove years old bubbled up paint without burning your hands. Tool 18, the brush cleaner. When you've been painting all day and you start to get a build up of dry paint around the base of your bristles, you can use your tool to scrape your brush clean so you don't start leaving clumps of paint on your work. Tool 19, the masking tape cutter. Get a straight tear every time. And now my personal favourite, tool 20, the bowl opener. Yeah, yeah, just like that. Tool 21, the chisel. Using a hammer with the multi-tool, you can chip away at stubborn imperfections that are too difficult to scrape off by hand. And now for the big tip. Tool 22, the door stop. When painting a door, you will need to use both your multi-tool and your duster brush together to form a door jam. This will stop the door from swinging and rubbing wet paint onto the walls and frame. Neat little trick, eh? Tool 23, the ladder stabiliser. If the floor is uneven and your ladder is a bit rocky, you can use the multi-tool to lift one end and steady the ladder, making it much safer to climb up. Tool 24, the corking gun cleaner. If you're like me and you wipe your leftover cork on the gun, over time the cork will build up and make it difficult to use. Using the multi-tool, peel off the cork and you have a nice clean gun, ready to go again. Thanks for watching guys, if you found this video helpful please give me a thumbs up and click on that sub button which will really help my channel out. I'm going to be making more Q&A videos, so feel free to ask me anything in the comments down below. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Catch you later.